Welcome to the As Told by Nomads podcast, where you'll learn how nomads, third culture kids, entrepreneurs, and leaders all over the world embrace their global identity and use their difference to make a difference. And now, having lived on four different continents, here's your host, Tyo Roxas. Welcome everybody to another episode of As Told by Nomads. Today's episode is with Peter Sage. Peter's a serial entrepreneur, success coach, best-selling author, award-winning athlete, speaker, and philosopher whose most recent success was the multi-billion dollar company, Space Energy. He's spoken for the likes of Google, NASA, and shared the stage with Richard Branson and Bill Clinton. So I'm so excited to have Peter here because we're going to be talking about ways to reinvent yourself, how to get around the myth of determining um, the factor of success, and why certainty is a myth. Welcome to the show, Peter. So what an absolute pleasure to be on, and uh, I'm really pleased we got the invite, and I'm really glad we made it happen. Likewise, likewise. So if, if I'm understanding this, you're calling me from the UK. I am indeed. Okay, okay. So d- tell us your background. Are you British? What you know? I am. My my hometown actually got a lot more famous recently, and uh, and that's a, a place called Leicester City. Oh, which, you're uh, in Leicester City. I'm a Manchester United fan. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, I'm, I'm in Leicester right now. It's my hometown, born and bred. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a huge soccer fan, but I, I uh, you couldn't help but get caught up in the, in the story the last 12 months of what Leicester managed to do to shock the world. Yeah, no, in, it, in a good way. It, it was certainly one of those uh, un, unlikely stories, but also feel-good stories, just because no one picked it up. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and serves as a great metaphor at so many levels, which I'm sure we'll get into as we as we carry on. All right, right. Now, so tell us, you know, how did you get started? You know, you you got into you are, I mean, you're from Leicester City, but what led you to doing what you do right now? I mean, everybody has a story. Yeah, you know, everybody has a background, and you know, everybody's starring in the movie of their own life. So, mm. yeah, uh, to, to give a little insight into mine, not that I want to make this uh, about me, because you know, one of the challenges is if you th- if you start putting people on a pedestal or start thinking it's about them, by definition, you minimize your own greatness. Mm. And yeah, while it's it's great to aspire to be like other people in terms of what you think they represent as a guiding light. The second we supplicate ourselves in terms of thinking that somebody is better or greater or what have you, rather than just having a few more moves ahead on the chessboard, then at that point, you know, we we, we can sell ourselves short. So for me, I'm happy to share a bit of my story, but don't think that that makes me any special. And part of my story demonstrates I'm no more special than anybody else listening here. I mean, you know, I may, I may have, say, had a, a little bit uh, uh, of an interesting journey across that chessboard, but I, I can promise you there's, there's nothing special or unique or clever about me that nobody else has the same level of uniqueness in them that they can't aspire for or project. So, yeah, for me, I, I mean, I was born on a, uh, a low-cost housing estate in you know, a rundown part of the city. Uh, I was never really academically gifted in any way. Uh, I, you know, I, I struggled at school. I wasn't that smart. I mean, school for me essentially teaches you two things, you know, how to pass tests and work for somebody else. And you know, that comes from a 20th, 19th and 20th century you know, industrial revolution model that trains people to be compliant so that you know, they can go into factories. And you know, that no longer serves 21st century reality in any level. Uh, and you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's an old, old phrase that says, you know, the, the A students usually end up working for the C students, uh, although not all C students make the grade. Right, and, right, right. <laughs> and so, yeah, if, if people are validating themselves through a certificate on the wall, they're already on the back foot. Now, don't get me wrong, if you need to learn certain skills in order to be able to do something, then that's, that's mandatory, that, you know, that's part of the game. Yeah, whether that's being an architect or learning salsa, doesn't matter. True. Yes, yeah, so you've got to pick up the skills. So, but if you're going to school to try and get certificates so that you think you're going to be good enough in the eyes of somebody else so that they can pay you more money so you can have more certainty, uh, I think the entire world has now pulled the curtain away from that wizard and realized there's a little guy pulling levers that yeah, has no power. Right. right. So for, for me, I, I got out of school at 16. Yeah, you know, I've got no formal qualifications. You know, I, I couldn't spell MBA. Yeah. And yeah, and for me, 
I uh, I just went out and started adding value to the world. I, it was, you know, it's a trip. I mean, we're living in a time in human history where you know we're, we're so grateful that you know we've got food certainty for a start. I mean, my parents had rations in the war. You know, there's you know we, we've got so much to be uh, grateful for and so much opportunity to take advantage of if we understand the rules of the game. Mm. And the rules of the game are very simple. Yeah, know what money is because so many people are chasing money that they all of a sudden start to you know, wonder why they don't have enough. It's like chasing strength in a gym when what you should be doing is chasing the ability to lift weights. Money is a result or a byproduct of adding value. And there's so many opportunities to add value right now because so many people are in pain, so many people are looking for you know, ways that you can help them, that adding value is the easiest time ever in history to be able to do it. So making money is a byproduct or a consequence of that. And when I recognized that coming out of school, uh, I thought, well, let's let's just go add value, and yeah, uh, it's it's really been a, a ride since then. I mean, yeah, I've I've had many global success stories, very you know, many global failures. Uh, in fact, Space Energy you mentioned earlier, Space Energy wasn't actually a commercial success. It was definitely a success in terms of being able to advance the technology for humanity. Yeah, but, you know, that was that was a, that was a big ask, and you know, I'm very grateful I've handed that over to the United Nations, and that's moving forward. But you know, it's all lessons and and parts of the journey along the way. So for me, it's it was always a, a desire to, to wanting to serve, wanting to add value, not making it too much about me. Now, although I guess in your 20s, that's hard not to do when you're trying to carve your way out in the world. <laughs> I mean, there, there is certainly a, a large millennial audience listens to this. But one thing I love about what you say, and, and I've, you know, I did a lot of research when I was when I heard that I was going to get to interview you. But one of the things you've said before is, it's not about what skills you're born with. It's about the mindset you develop. And and I love, you know, the story that you shared about your school, your schooling. You know, you're talking about how, you know, that's not what you necessarily were. And some people, when you go to school, I do believe that it's drummed down to you that if you don't get that grade, you might not be ready for success or life in general. So you, you're you someone that has flipped that around and you've developed a lot of things that many people looking back, your teachers probably would have said, is that Peter Sage? Peter Sage was not the student, and I thought he was going to be. Look at him now. So. And, yeah, and look, but look at the model, right? I mean, let, let's just step into the common sense corner for a second. Right. Right. You're going to go to an institution that trains you in information that is outdated, that has very little application in what really matters in the world, especially in terms of you know what 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 makes people excited or not excited. What makes you get up in the morning? What makes you you know um, get out of bed when the, the odds are against you? We, we don't learn any of that in school. Also, that we can get a piece of paper signed by somebody we never met that says, "Great, now you qualify to go out and live life." Give me a break. <laughs> no, no, it, no. It's honestly really frustrating. And one of the guests I had the last week actually was. There was two of them. One of the missions is to get the education system out of the, out of the industrial mindset because it is outdated and it's causing a lot of problems, especially since we, you want to have the youth grow up to be better leaders. Um, okay, so if, if I were to stay on this education here, how did you educate yourself and figure out how to follow your passion or how did you even discover your passion? It was a, a very specific event to be fair that, that led to a, a whole series of uh, of understandings and that was the the event where i discovered personal development yeah i remember i i came across personal development you know i was actually playing pool in a bar and i was waiting at the, the bar waiting for my turn to play pool and and there was a guy there with a mobile phone and this is back in 89 so yeah mobile phones are like you know a few thousand bucks i'm like wow this guy's got money and i was looking for opportunity at the time which again is a critical factor yeah, if you're not if if you're looking, you'll find it. Right. Yeah, if you ask better questions, you'll get better answers. Yeah, it's it's not difficult, right? But if you sit there, you know, wondering why you don't get the answers, then yeah, your brain will give you an answer to that question as well because you're smart. I mean, it, it'll it'll come up with all sorts of reasoning because that's its job, <laughs> right? Yeah, so yeah, for for me, I I just got, I was I saw this guy and I thought, wow, this guy's obviously got money. He's got he's got one of these new phone things, and uh, and I went over and talked to him, and he he. Yeah, you know, he opened my eyes to a world of personal value. He dropped me some, and you know, back in these days, your, your millennial just won't even remember audio cassettes. But yeah, you know, uh, I picked up a set of. Do Peter? 
<laughs> yeah, CDs are obsolete just about these days, you know. And uh, I got this audio cassette, and it was it was some seminar that was recorded about you know success and whatever. But I remember listening to this. You know, I was on my my, my little bed at home, and I, I was laying there with this little you know, cheap pair of headphones on this little Walkman, and I was like, "Whoa, hang on a minute! Whoa, stop! Time out! You mean there's an industry that teaches how to be successful? Whoa, where was that in school?" Where was that on my list of options to study? Right, because you know what? Or as far as I remember, I got you know biology, you know algebra, you know the, the periodic table. I mean, that's the stuff that they wanted me to learn. Which yeah, if I want to be a physicist, a biologist, or a mathematician, then great. Yeah, they're, they're my tools of the trade. But I didn't go into school wanting to be any of those. I wanted to be successful in life because I think that's a bigger prize. Right now, if successful in life means that you live your passion as a biologist, then by all means, that's the route you should take. But for me, that was that was never the calling. I wanted to go out in the real world and, and, and start playing. And so when I discovered personal development, it was like, wow, there's an industry that teaches. You know, why don't I just shortcut all the other crap that I learned that I was not applying? You know, and I'll, I'll be honest. I don't think I'm 44 years old now. I left school at, at you know, 16. So you know, we're, we're getting close to you know, several decades now of, of being out of the school system. I don't think... In all of that time, hand on heart, I've ever been asked what the chemical symbol for lead is. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. As, no. you know or, or to explain Pythagoras theory. I, I mean, just, it, it's not. It, it's the different system. So I got, I became a voracious learner. Every penny that I made, every, every you know, dollar I, I got, I invested into more books, more tapes. Now, the, the amazing thing is, in today's world, you don't even have to do that. You've got people like yourself, Ted, that are putting out information for people that you can learn for free. YouTube yeah, is worth more than any Harvard education True. Yeah, because that, yeah, if you have the willingness to seek, yeah, the will to, to move forward on a path of wanting to be your best self. And that's where you know, the, the, the main issue is, not the lack of information. Yeah, and so I, I, I basically just sucked up everything I could learning about you know, um, and studying great people in history and, and those that made a difference and those that I wanted to uh, you know, uh, aspire to emulate in, in some way that had walked the path that I, I sought to walk. Uh, and right now, that was, as I say, it's, it's an incredible opportunity for people to be able to do that. And that's what gave me the edge over pretty much everything. My business from the age of 17 when I started my first company to now 44, where I think I'm running my 23rd, 24th business. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> yeah, every... Yeah, every step that I've taken has in business has paralleled the advance that I've had in personal development. That's and I think, I think Jim Rohn said it beautifully. I'll finish this quote on, on, on the subject for this. Jim, the late, great Jim Rohn said, formal education may help you make a living. And that's not even guaranteed these days, which is why you see people qualified to be a barrister uh, leave uh, university and they can't get a job as a barista. Right, right. And so, you know, formal education may help to make you a living, but informal education will make you a fortune. Hmm. Hmm. Informal education will make you a fortune. Informal education will make you a fortune. Wow. That's, uh, that's really deep. I'm, I'm, I had to let that marinate for a second for that. For, for yeah, a while. personal development. Yeah, what you learn in school may help you get a job. What you learn out of school, what you seek from, you know, again, things like this podcast and, and other aspects in the personal development industry, That'll help you make a fortune. Wow. Wow. Well, so you started, let's say, let's talk about how you made a fortune. You started when you were, you said 17, first business. Now you've done over 20 businesses. What lessons have you learned along the way as you were building businesses? I'm sure you've had failures. I'm sure you have a lot of successes. But what has yeah. been the constant thing that you've noticed that you needed to do? And how did you have to shift your mindset to become even more successful than when you first started? I'd say you know your number one lesson out of all that, and, and everybody wants the number one this, number one that. You know, there's there's a ton of lessons. I want to share all the lessons I had in in uh, the, you know, thirty odd years of business. I yeah, we, we we wouldn't be on here for an hour. But if, yeah, if I uh, if I was to say what, one of the key lessons, let's put it that way, uh, for me is to understand your why. Most people's why is unconscious, and it's coming from the wrong place. That wrong place is. How can I fill a gap that I think is missing in my life? Yeah, and that could be all the usual suspects. You know, I need to prove that I'm good enough 
so my parents yeah you know, give me the adoration i think that you know i i need to to get or my as i say my my business studies teacher you know is you know i can prove wrong that said i wouldn't do anything or my you know i can be like my big brother who's successful in my eyes or whatever it may be yeah you know, what is your why now if your why is about what you can get i got news for you no matter what business you go into no matter what success quote or not you have in the marketplace it's going to be a struggle and you're going to have some level of unfulfillment there because you're trying to go external to fill a gap that's internal. And those two worlds don't meet at that level. Hmm. Yeah, you're trying to yeah, catch yeah, the, the, or win the medal of yeah, fulfillment by running on the track of achievement. And those two are yeah, not compatible. So ask yourself a better question. If my why is about what I can contribute rather than what I can get, then we've got a different conversation. Then you're going in the gym looking for the weights, not looking for the strength. The strength will come. And believe me, life is your best training partner. It loves you. It wants to serve you. It's there for you. But if you ignore your training partner, then you're going to struggle in the race of life. Yeah, Life is a, is a, a beautiful personal trainer. And if you say, hey, I'm in for a marathon, let's go. And let's take that as an example. You look at the New York Marathon. And 30, 40,000 people lining the streets, cheering on a, you know, a, a, a several thousand runners. But those runners, every year, there's a, there's a certain bunch. I'm not talking about the professionals that do it every, you know, uh, every yeah, year for, for fun or, or you know, as part of their sport. I'm talking about the people that do it for the first time. For a lot of people that have never ran a marathon, it's a big goal. And 26.2 miles, 42 kilometers. It's a big goal. So the people that run that for the first time, let's look at that. There are way more people that finish the marathon, first timers, that are not athletes, that are not this, you know, not professionals, not you know, everything else, that are running for a cause that is greater than themselves, than those that say, oh, I'm going to go run a marathon out of ego and then quit halfway through their training program because that's about as far as ego will take you. So what is your why? Yeah, are you going into business? Are you seeking to, to go into your, your, your job or what have you to be able to contribute the best of who you are, to give your gift to the world, to be able to come more and grow and contribute? Or is it, oh, no, I need to start a business because I'm, uh, I'm tired of not having enough? Yeah, there's two corridors you can walk down and whichever you place your foot in first, I guarantee you it doesn't matter. The rest of the moves will follow. And if it's about what can I get, no cheese at the end of that tunnel. Uh, if it's about what I can contribute, you can lose the business and still feel fulfilled. Well, that, that's brilliant. And one of the reasons I, I asked you that question is because, you know, in, recently for me, when I started, you know, I, I shared a little bit about my background before we got on the call about having to grow up in, in several cultures and that really shaped my worldview. But when I discovered, you know, I, I was reading Maya Angelou one time and she said, I come forth alone and I stand as 10,000. And and I started to understand exactly why I, I love the media, you know, and and for me, and that's exactly what I've, I, you know, I feel like I have that responsibility almost every day, whether it's what I'm saying with the platforms I have, since I'm I'm being conscious about the media I'm using, and that's that's a why for me, you know, it's like my generation, we have to solve the world problems, we have to show the the type of diversity that exists, and I have that responsibility to be that lens. There's so many people where I'm going to speak, when I'm going that, and that for me is my why, right? So, I get it. And it comes across, my friend. It's it's you. You got a beautiful energy on that, and one of the reasons why I'm sure we connected. You know, I, I get a lot of requests, and yeah, you know, my team are looking for people that we can add value to that are adding value to others. Oh, thank you, thank you, and 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 thank you for elaborating on the why because I, you know, I mean, I know Simon Sinek talks about it a lot, but. It's something, it's something that it's so simple, but not many people actually do sit down to process because that why, if it's greater, like you said, than, than what you're trying to, than just you, then it becomes a really, really important mission. And then you're able to wake up and, and put in the time and put in the hours and you're able to, to get the results. Yeah. Hundred percent. So goop, you talk about goop. How to stop swimming <laughs> in goop? What is goop? First of all, oh, <laughs> goop. It's a nasty, sticky, horrible, life-draining substance that nobody ever wants to get stuck swimming in. Um, yeah, G O O P. The good opinion of other people. <laughs> 
uh, spent way too long myself swimming in goop. It's exhausting, and that really is a. That's not just a tunnel with no cheese. That's a tunnel with a mousetrap. <laughs> you know. And, yeah, uh, so many people are uh, are going against their natural tendencies, their uh, their intuition, their gut feel. You know, you, you were born with a compass. Yeah, called intuition, yeah, or the heart yeah, level of intelligence. And this isn't hyperbole, new age thinking. Yeah, this is cardio science. This is neuroscience. Yeah, you you study the guys at the HeartMath Institute. Yeah, you study the fact that yeah, that the brain once entrained to the yeah, electromagnetic chemical and signals out of the heart, yeah, forms a level of coherence that slows down the aging process by almost a factor of ten. Yeah, this is you know, this is practical stuff. Your heart understands. Stanford have done many different experiments where you know, your body's innate intelligence energetically you know, answers the question before your conscious mind even registers the fact that the question has been comprehended. You know, we're, we're talking about you know, cutting edge stuff. But you know, if you are born to follow that level of innate truth, that you know, let's call it your path, your, you know, I sum it up by essentially one word, authenticity. Being who you are meant to be, not trying to be somebody that you think other people will approve of. And that's the masks that we wear. Uh, and so Goop is, uh, as I say, it, it, it's, it's an affliction that affects most of humanity, uh, especially young people growing up, you know, trying to carve their place in the world, desperately seeking significance, validation, approval, you know, thumbs up. Uh, and again, look, you go to social media, you know, largest platform in the world, right. Facebook. What is Facebook? I'll tell you what Facebook is. Facebook is not your life. Facebook is the life you want other people to think you have. True, true. Best representation it's, of who you are. It's it's a giant mask. Yeah, and then people get sucked into. Oh, how many likes did I get on that? In order to now get an approval on the mask that they've just put on. For, there's no authenticity. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. I, I was I was actually uh, yesterday. I was in London, and uh, I was. Uh, uh, walking out of a, a meeting that I had and there was a, a young couple walking down the street and there was this young girl that was probably, I don't know, 18 years old and it was just a, a normal sunny day and it looks like they were going to a, you know, just a cafe but she was so loaded with makeup. Now, I'm not here to judge anything. I'm here to point out uh, and, uh, and hold up a mirror for people to see their own greatness. That's my role in life. But if you, uh, at that age are so fearful of showing your real face when you just want to go down to the supermarket or the cafe. And she wasn't off to a job interview. She wasn't out for a nightclub. Yeah, then you've got to start asking questions. Mm -hmm. Who are you when you take the makeup off in the mirror? And how yeah, are you going to be scared going out again unless you've got to put your face on? Yeah, or yeah, it's it's not it's where do you draw the line between influence and manipulation? I'm trying to manipulate people's opinion of me, or worse still, I'm becoming this giant chameleon. And makeup is just one out of many examples you know, that we all have. You know, how do I adapt myself into a projection of what I think in my own mind other people will approve of? I mean, if, if you actually ran that pattern consciously, you'd be committed to an asylum. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, it's Walter Mitty 101. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I love your analogies. I love your analogies. Well, well, then what is the difference between manipulation and influence? Uh, for me, let's come back to the reason we started the business yeah, or going to get the goal that we, we, we're trying to get right now. Yeah, I like fast cars. I, I set my you know, goal when uh, I wanted to go out and buy the, the new McLaren. But why did I want to buy the McLaren? Because I love driving fast. I, you know, I was living in Dubai. We've got some desert roads. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm a fast car guy. I've had supercars since I was 22. Yeah, uh, Ferraris and God knows what. And, and I enjoy that style of driving. However, you never once saw a picture of that car on my social media for the couple of years I had it. Because right? it's not about, oh, look what I've got. Yeah, it's, it's a different reason. I want to start my business. Why? Because this is my passion. I want to express myself as an entrepreneur, win, lose, or draw. Yeah, That's why I live. Not so I can sell myself out for the illusion of certainty to get a paycheck at the end of the week from somebody I don't like. Right? So yeah, come back to yeah, the... Uh, 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 the, the the why why am I doing this why am I uh, uh, going forward if it's to try to manipulate somebody it's because I'm trying to get something that serves my agenda more than theirs hmm. influence is where I'm trying to affect something 
what I think will add value, you know, even at the expense of my own deal. Yeah, if I'm trying to manipulate, and, and again, you see great leaders, Nelson Mandela. Yeah, Nelson Mandela, when he came out, and I, I worked with the Mandela family, they're, they're an amazing bunch. Yeah, you're making me jealous. Nelson Mandela is one of my biggest role models. <laughs> oh, and, indeed, greatest living leader of the 20, yeah, 21st or 20th oh. and 21st century. Oh. And yeah, he, he was incredible. I never got to meet the man himself, but I, I spent, uh, we do a lot of work with the Mandela Legacy Foundation. We, we take kids out of places like Soweto, Guguledu, some of the, the, the you know, townships, and we put them throughout our business school and um, uh, through scholarship and the results have just been incredible so we've got a, we've got a, a very tight um, uh, relationship with them but you know if you take Nelson Mandela when Nelson Mandela came out of you know 27 years on Robin Island he had 30 million people chanting essentially one song which is now it's our turn yeah retribution yeah uh, yeah generations of suppression boom now we finally get payback now if he as a political leader playing the politics game that so many people do, that he had the ability to rally 30 million people and make him some sort of you know living God at that moment, but he didn't. He didn't come out calibrating at the level of pride or anger. He knew that if he'd have done that, the entire country would have gone into civil war. He came out at what level? Forgiveness, unconditional love. Exactly. Yeah, unification. And what was his position? Hey. If I can forgive them after 27 years, what excuse are you got? And we went, whoa. And he united the country under a beautiful banner called the Rainbow Nation. Yeah, we're all different colors. We're all different nationalities. Everybody's unique, but we work together for the benefit and beauty of South Africa. And that was massively unpopular initially with the people that were still driven by pride and anger that wanted to have a go back at the whites that had suppressed them. Yeah, well, and it wasn't just the whites. You know, It was the different levels of race, color, tribe, Zulus, whatever. Yeah, it was it was a, it was civil war. But no, he he was willing to be unpopular in the moment for what he believed to be the long term greater good. And that to me is what separates true leadership statesmanship from the political jokes that we have these days, who unfortunately, not because they're bad people. And again, I, I don't do politics. So you know, anyone listening here, you've got your own opinion. That's great. I'm, you're more than welcome. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, my job here is to do nothing more than yeah, hold up a mirror for people to look at. So. You know, if we have, um, uh, take Barack Obama for as an example, yeah, uh, and again, no judgment here, this is observation. When Barack Obama came, uh, was coming into power on his first you know, election, he, the, the country voted him because he, he seemed to be a breath of fresh air. Yeah, he was going to challenge Congress. He was going to you know, buck the status quo. It was about time we did this. And he was so authentic in his message and so articulate that the majority of the electorate got behind him and he became president. Now, here's the challenge. It's not a challenge with the Barack Obama. It's a challenge with the system. The second he became president, the very next day, he can no longer operate on the same basis and principles of the game that he was playing the day before. Why? Because now there's a different agenda, like it or not. And that agenda has a primary filter, and that primary filter is how does what we do right now affect our chances of re-election in four years' time? Right. That's true. Um, that's and, true. And, and it shifts. And so even if you wanted to be unpopular at that point, I've got news for you. Uh, it, it's not going to be allowed to happen. You're the people that donated to the campaign, the people that are in office, the advisors, everyone else living moment to moment, just like Wall Street. Yeah, no long term. Yeah, show me a, a company on Wall Street that they like that takes a, a dip in profits over the next two years because they're investing in a twenty-five year future. Eh, not going to happen. <laughs> right? uh, no, so, that's true. Yeah. So manipulation and intent is all about how do I serve? Yeah, you know, with what I'm I'm looking at. And again, it's subjective. You may think that you have the right to try and help somebody because you're projecting your own model of the world onto them. Uh, now, with a parent and a child, that's that's a pretty good call because the child doesn't have enough experience to make their own decisions. But it's still a projection of your own model of the world. You know, you may want to help your brother who's on drugs because you see a better light. And that's a noble cause, and therefore you're gonna try and influence him into a better lifestyle. But it's still your projection. It may be that him on drugs for the next two years is the very lesson that he needs in order to become the person who he is yeah, five years from now. We don't know. That's all subjective. All we can do is listen to our inner guidance, our heart, and as what there at the time, that compass that speaks to us at the time. And so yeah, where, where do you draw the line? 
always subjective. Right? So you lead with the best version of you that you can. And that's about being authentic. It is about being authentic. No, I, I love that. And I want to be authentic on your businesses. You talk about failing spectacularly. No, no you said failed majestically. So um, has someone that started over 27 businesses, what were these majestic failures that you had? I'm just so curious. Oh, I mean, there's, you, you kind of lose count. I mean, I, I probably, you know, I say to people, I've probably failed more times than I've won, but I keep my average number of tries up. But, yeah, in terms of businesses, that's not true. I've only ever lost two businesses um, uh, out of the, you know, 20 plus that I've, I've had. Um, but uh, failure, uh, and th this, is, this is a huge point for, for people to, to prick their ears up to, failure is your capital. Yeah, failure is your greatest asset. Now, the reason most people discount that, the reason most people run away from that, the reason most people hold their head in shame and don't want to mention that is for a very fundamental yeah, uh, reason. And it's a, it's a flaw that entrepreneurs yeah, and actually most of society uh, are suffering with. And it's almost as bad as goop. And it's the fact that your self-worth and your net worth are artificially tied together. And the second you, you tie your self-worth to your net worth based upon media and conditioning and you know, have more, be more and all this kind of stuff, then you will always be in the, you know, the foot in the corridor of fear and what can I get and how do I protect myself rather than the foot in the corridor of love. How do I grow? How do I contribute? How do I add value? And so you know, if I lost everything tomorrow, which has happened several times, probably happen again. Why? Because I'm an entrepreneur. I swing the bat. I roll the dice. That's what I do. There's no certainty in life. Right. And if I lost everything tomorrow again, it'd be a damn good excuse to swing the bat one more time. Why? Because I'm here, I'm alive, I'm lucky enough to have two arms and a bat to swing. Right? That's the game. Now, if I'm trying to collect it all so that I can feel validated about who I am because I've got a bank balance with more zeros on than I had previously, and I'm going to get to the end of my life playing a game called Chasing the More only to realize nobody else was really caring about me playing. Hmm. And the, at the end of the game damn, I can't even take it with me? Well, no. The Egyptians tried that 3,000 years ago. What happened? We dug it up and stole it. It's, you know, everything in the physical world, depends how deep you want to get here, is subject to the law of impermanence. Every relationship that you have in your life, I've got news for you, will end. Case closed. I don't care if that's a relationship with your soulmate, your wife, your kids, your business, your house, or your body. At some point, those relationships will end. So what's the game about? Is it how do I collect more so I can feel significant and then take a breath? What's wrong with taking a breath right now? Realize that you already are that which you seek, and therefore you can go out and play the game, win or lose, with more passion and energy than you are trying to protect yourself. And the paradox is you tend to be more successful. I mean, you're on a roll, Peter. I, so, I mean, I, I'm like, I don't want to put him out. I don't want to put him out. He's on fire. But so, you know, as we're getting ready to close here, I, I know a lot of the people that listen here are, they come to the podcast because, you, you know, they're from different parts of the world. They want to know how to communicate across cultures, but they also want to know how to find their purpose and, and just start. You know, they're looking for inspiration. And you, one of your missions um, is you describe yourself as the aha makers, smile creators, magic moment facilitators, and a global force for good. So you're really helping people tap into what it is, is that is their inner greatness. I want you to talk to those early young entrepreneurs out there who are thinking of being greater than they already are, being someone who is of influence, but they just don't know where to start and they feel lost. I want you to talk to that person. Okay, a couple of things. You gotta ask yourself about what's going forward and you've got to ask yourself what's stopping you. Yeah, what 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 will help you go forward, and what and what's stopping you. So yeah, on that basis, yeah, we have to understand that. Yeah, let's look at what's stopping us first. We've covered a few of those. One is goop. Yeah, one is tying your self worth to your net worth. Yeah, and understanding yeah all of the yeah the issues that go along with that. You know, traditional education, all the rest of it. The the peer group, the negativity. You know, your mind is like a compass needle. It can only point in one direction at a time. So where is it magnetized for most people? Well, the two most predominant forces are you know, your peer group. Who you hang with is who you become, case closed. Uh, and that's, that's not necessarily just proximity these days. That's you know, who you spend time you know, studying. 
you know, is it soap operas and daytime TV or you know, is it listening to podcasts like this or, or inspirational people? You know, what are you reading? You know, is it yeah, uh, FHM and, uh, and Cosmopolitan uh, or is it you know, inspirational you know, books of people's lives you want to emulate? So you know, your peer group is a huge part. But then we get to the media. Now, when I talk about the media, I'm talking about traditional media. Yeah, you, you know, what do you call CNN, um, constant negative news. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, other other forms of traditional media which are predominantly focused on an entirely different business model than most people are aware of. Yeah, you know, I put a 20 minute video on my YouTube channel talking about the business model of the media and why yeah, it has absolutely nothing to do with reporting what you perceive to be news. If you still think that, you're in Disneyland. Yeah, and uh, and so that's condition. So the, the your peer group in the media are constantly stroking the compass needle of your mind into a, a magnetic north that when you're unconscious, which is 95% of the time, we're doing things out of habit. That's why most people can't remember the last you know, two miles they drove on the freeway. Uh, it's habitual. During that time, your compass needle will default to its yeah, conditioned north. For most people, that is predominantly negative. So how can you find your purpose in life? How can you cut through the noise, the fog, the, all of the insane yeah, uh, uh, distractions and when you're trying to find your purpose, if you've got that much noise going on, your, your magnetic north has been trained to be default negative. Right? It's almost impossible. And it's, it's like trying to run a marathon with you know, concrete shoes. <laughs> so yeah, if you then uh, switch that over and say, okay, I, I understand what's stopping me. What can help? If I get rid of that, what then can I do to help find yeah, that true north? Fastest way to do it. Ask better questions. We talked about earlier, questions direct focus. Yeah, if you say, why can't I find my purpose? Your brain will give you an answer. And because you don't have one, because you're not good enough, because you know it's all bullshit, because the blah, it doesn't matter, it'll fill in the blank because his job is to fill in the blank. The left side of the brain's job is to balance the equation to make you feel right the way you are right now. If you've not figured that out, <laughs> it's, it's staring at you. So ask better questions, yeah? And, and what questions would be, yeah, I'd suggest things like, okay, if I could only spend my life doing one thing right now, what would I choose it to be? What's something that I, I would love to do so much as a career or a job, I'd actually pay to do it and sit with it. Yeah? Let the question percolate, maybe two weeks before you get a congruent answer, but at least you're asking the question. Yeah? If I knew it was impossible to fail and I already had everything that I wanted right now, what would I spend my time doing? And what you're doing, you're edging towards passion. You're edging towards giving a gift from a place of love, not fear, from abundance, not scarcity, from possibility, yeah, not limitation. And, and start, you know, how many times do people spend an hour of their day, let alone their life, asking those kind of questions and sitting there and contemplating it? You know, the challenge is you're never told emphatically that you were good enough. And even if those people did, you didn't believe it because you had too many other people say you weren't. Again, education. You're only good enough if you get this grade. You're only good enough if you pass this test. You're only good enough if you do as I say. Uh, gosh, is it any wonder that people come out of the educational system confused? So you want to find your passion. Right? First of all, start surrounding yourself, either proximity or online, with information that supports the truth that you were born a miracle, that you can it's not about academic intelligence to validate who you are. It's not about how much money you have in the bank. Money is a byproduct or a consequence. You can't go to life and say, right, yeah, sit in front of the fire and say, I'm really cold. Yeah, please give me some heat. Then I'll go fetch some wood. Yeah, that doesn't work. No, go give your gift and you'll look over your shoulder one day and think, wow, where did that money come from? Because money is nothing more than a byproduct or a consequence of adding value. It's a medium of exchange. Other than that, it's pieces of paper with dead people printed on it shiny metal or you know, hard rocks. That's about it. It's conceptual, it only exists in the mind of a human. Nothing else keeps track of money. So yeah, it's just a medium of exchange that is one step better than goats and chickens because if I want something and you've got goats, yeah, and yeah, you want chickens and I haven't got them, then we can't do business. So money's just an arbitrary medium of exchange that represents an exchange of value. So concentrate on the exchange of value. Muscles and a toned body represents the fact that you've put time and effort in. Your body will respond to its environment. I don't care if it's the gym or McDonald's. It will respond in kind. Yeah. Your mind will 
always adapt to its environment, whether that's nine recreational drug users that watch daytime TV and talk about the problems and, and all the crap in life, in which case you expect to become the 10th, or nine yeah, self-motivated, self-starters that come from how we can, not why we can't, and I'll find a way to make it happen, and then expect to become the 10th. But your bank balance will also adapt to its environment, either one where you add value or one where you complain about the fact that you're not. It's just the rule of the world. And when you understand it in that context, it makes it pretty simple. No, no, you're right. If, if you hang around nine idiots, you're going to become the 10th. That's, uh, that's, just, that's just the way of life. Um, it's the law of conformity, my friend, and it's, it's the 95% law. You can't swim against the current, right? You can try. You can do all your best efforts. But at some point, you're going to want to relax and take a breath. And at that point, the current wins. You can't at all. So th this, is, this is a great point to ask this question, which I usually ask at the end. It's the mission statement. Use your difference to make a difference. That's the umbrella of everything I do. It's, you know, I'm trying to get people to embrace their individuality and also understand the complexity of what it is to be diverse and how that mindset works. But I'm very curious as to how you, Peter, use your difference to make a difference. We all have a gift. Yeah, we all have a thing. Yeah, mine is being able to articulate certain concepts in a way that people hopefully can understand them a little easier. Yeah, it's to be able to go out and put myself in a vulnerable state, hoping that I can serve people, but not being attached to the results because I'm not validating who I am by what I do. Yeah, it's, and everybody has that, that gift. Everybody has that uniqueness. How do I know that? Because when you look at the biology of how you were born, it was 400 million to one that you showed up. That's not an accident. Why did you want to be here so badly? <laughs> And not only that, let's take it a step further. If you look under the microscope right now and you see that there's about you know, a dozen, maybe 50 of the 400 million sperm that actually get to the egg and start knocking on the door. One is chosen. You are the chosen one. And when you believe that in yourself as much as I believe it in you, everything changes. And then you know your difference and you go give it to the world. You are the chosen one. You're a miracle. You died in an accident. I love that. I love that so much. That's great. That That's such a great way to start yourself in the morning. If you look at in the mirror, everyone listening, you're saying, I'm a miracle. I was brought here for a purpose, and I'm not an accident. Um, I can't think of a better way to start your day. That's that's amazing. Love that, Peter. Uh, and it's it's not a, it's not hyperbole. It's, you know, look under the microscope. Listen to your heart. Yeah, it's there. The only reason you won't listen to that is because if you're listening to something else, remember the mind can nope. only point one direction at a time. So start, start magnetizing the compass needle of your, your mind into a better direction and then see where your life follows on that path. Yeah, Not, don't listen to the good opinions of other people. Listen to uh, your heart and understand your why. Well, uh, Peter, this, this has been incredible. So if people want to get more gems like that, understanding how to re reinvent themselves, understanding lessons you've learned from your, your successes and failures. Where can they find you? What programs are you working on? What books have you written? Uh, just tell, tell the world about what you do. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, yeah, I've got a lot of information out there on, on YouTube, on my website at petersage.com. Um, and I try to put as much you know, free content out there to help people as possible on their journey. Uh, if you want to come and, and, and play with me in person, and uh, I, I have my, my flagship event, I, I'm so proud of because it's so transformational for people. It's a three day business school. But I think you know me well enough to know by now that it's not just business that, that gets done. You know, the entire first day is about reinventing who you are from the ground up, your relationship to life, your relationship to money, your relationship to your self-worth. You know, all of these things are, are using the most advanced and cutting edge stuff that I, I've, I've put together in 30 years of, of doing this. And you know, once we've done that, then we can spend two days teaching you how to you know, take a business and scale it and move it to the world without spending any money. And that's, that's just a, a bonus at that point. People think they come to learn how to make money. What they really you know, get at the end of it is, yeah, they, they've learned tons of ways to make money, but who they are is the prize. And so, yeah, I have the, the Sage Business School. Next one's in October in, uh, in London. Um, uh, you know, information on my website. Uh, it would be a pleasure to, uh, to see anybody there so I can shake your hand in person. All right, all right. And, and everything about Peter Sage can be found on petersage.com. He's got amazing information about his programs, how you can book him, his recommendations, uh, even ways to contact him. As you can tell, he's very personable, and he's very, very passionate about, about what he's doing. So 
I'll definitely put that in the show notes, but be sure to check out petersage.com and sage is S-A-G-E. And yeah, go go make an impact in the world uh, and continue to use your difference to make a difference. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Peter. Ty, my absolute pleasure. You're doing God's work, my friend. And uh, it's been a, a real delight to you know, probably leave a little thumbprint on that for today if I can. <laughs> the pleasure is mine, sir. <laughs>